Hello and welcome back to the Tank Cave and welcome back to the build series, well, two parts, of the Ravel Shelby Mustang GT350H, uh, the infamous Hertz cars. Uh, so this is part two and this is the final part. Uh, it's a part one covered, uh, getting all the body work done, prep, paint, all that kind of stuff, decals, got pretty much all the running gear interior and engine all done. Uh, so all the major sub-assemblies are complete. Uh, part two will now get uh, into the polish, bare metal foil, uh, around the kind of chrome trims on the body, final assembly, and then some final photos. So, so this part's a little bit shorter than the first part, but it seemed to split the, the kind of build uh, fairly kind of nicely for, from where we left it from the last time into, into two parts. So... As usual, you know, sit back, put your feet up, relax, have a coffee, have a beer, maybe a cold drink at the moment because the weather is, is melting in the UK. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to leave a comment, and don't forget to drop a like at the end of the video as well. So uh, enjoy the show, and I'll see you at the end for some final thoughts. Thank you. Right, let's get straight back into the action. Uh, it's the last time we left the bodywork completely kind of finished, paint, prime, etc. Uh, 2K was done, that's been left to cure, did all the interior running gear. So first job is to try and get rid of any blemishes uh, that may have appeared, you know, things like dust spots, etc., which may have dropped in during the, the 2K phase. Uh, so I'm going to use some micro mesh. Uh, I think I'm starting with 4,000 grit this time. Because uh, I do find that when the 2K has been sat around for a week or so, as this one has done, uh, it's extremely hard and well cured. And the, the 4,000 grit just tends to get rid of any, any blemishes a little bit easier uh, than a finer grit. So using some water, uh, best to use this stuff wet. Uh, that definitely helps uh, kind of stop trapping any kind of particles that are coming up and, and making the scratches that bit worse. Uh, as you're progressing through with a wet surface, of course, hard to see exactly what's kind of done and what's not done. So dry it off every now and again and uh, re-wet the micro mesh uh, as necessary and carry on. So I'm basically using a forward and back motion uh, in this case just to keep those uh, abrasions reasonably consistent uh, here you see me doing some slightly larger circles which I, I try not to do but sometimes kind of you just kind of fall into that little habit uh, so this is working with the 6000 grit I guess uh, and then progressing on to the 8 and the 12 uh, so there's a few dust spots on the roof Couple of spots on the the trunk boot. If you're in the UK, trunk. If you're in the US, let's call it a trunk. It's an American car after all, uh, and not a huge amount of blemishes on the side. Uh, so, so I think I'm just using the eight thousand grit, just to take a little bit of the the kind of any imperfections off that kind of top surface. Uh, so the bonnet is separate, but that gets exactly the same treatment as every other part. So once again, it's the same process uh, with the bonnet because there's molded in bonnet pins. You do need to be careful. You don't uh, get over them too much with the with the micro mesh. You don't want to burn through that 2K. So once I'm happy with the micro mesh work, uh, it's time to break out the UMP polishing compounds. So I'm starting with number one, which is the, the most coarse compound. Uh, basically using a, a micro mesh cloth uh this one came with polishing compounds uh it is it does appear to be a very good quality one i have to say uh so in this case i'm, I'm actually using a circular motion here i know some people do forward and back or side to side uh, i kind of start with circular and then run backwards and forwards to work that compound in and get rid of uh, of any of those surface imperfections left by the micro mesh. 
So once that's been worked into the surface, we can dry that, we can buff that off. When I'm happy with that, it's time to go into compound number two, which is the polish. Uh, in this case, I decided to try and go in the at 90 degrees to the direction, uh, just to try that, because I have seen a couple of very fine scratches left behind. Uh, I want to see if this would improve that kind of final finish. Uh, in this case, I'm not sure it did. While I'm quite happy with the finish, that there is still one or two little kind of scratch marks from the micro mesh. But but as with compound number one, compound number two is worked around all the same areas we we worked on before. Uh, with the with the sanding with the micro mesh and onto the compound number one onto compound number two. So once I'm happy with that, uh, I'm not going to go to the wax stage. So I'm going to go to the bare metal foil stage. Now th there's always a choice with bare metal foil. You can do it before the two K, uh, and that does have its advantages because any of the the kind of cut lines you're going to make along that trim will be a little bit better defined before the 2k uh, the 2k will fill some of those those recesses and can make it a little bit harder to follow but in this case because of the presence of the decals i didn't really want to put anything adhesive on the surface because uh, you could easily lift those def decals before they've been 2k so in this case 2k is done Maybe a little bit extra care in this case. So for bare metal foil, it's, it's kind of a standard process. Basically lay down a strip exactly where you want it, burnish it down into the areas you want. Make sure you burnish that cut line uh, using a blunt cocktail stick. And once that's down and happy, using a brand new scalpel blade, I'm just running along that trim line, uh, basically to exactly where I want to trim the bare metal foil to size. So in this case, I'm starting with the top of the windscreen and just working my way around that and getting my head in the way. Once I'm happy with that, you can lift off the excess and then just make sure everything is nicely burnished down and well stuck to the surface and uh, this bare metal foil that i'm using i think it's quite old the adhesive in some bits of it was not brilliant in fact one bit just didn't adhere at all to the surface uh, but then i have heard that bare metal foil does seem to have a shelf life uh, so the fresher the better in this case but for the rest of the sheet it, it did seem it did seem to go okay so then just working another strip uh, down the side of the A pillars around that front windscreen. Same process, get a small amount down and then cut along the trim line that you need. And generally, I'll let that kind of overlap into where the next section will go. And then the next section will, will kind of bring it up to a nice kind of corner point. same process burnish it down and then trim it to size along that cut line along that trim line uh, one thing that is noticeable is probably by the time you've finished you may notice the knife the scalpel blade will not cut as well uh, bare metal foil being actual metal will quite quickly blunt uh, a, a good scalpel blade So you, sometimes you do need to be aware you may need to change blades. So now I'm working along the bottom of the windscreen. Uh, this kit has got molded in windscreen wipers. Uh, and I'm actually going to work the bare metal foil around those. Uh, so they'll be foiled as well and give the kind of chrome windscreen wiper look. But even for that for a slightly more complex shape it is still exactly the same process just burnish down along that trim line make sure i'm happy that that's nicely stuck down to the body and trim 
along the line that you need once again. So once, once I've happily trimmed uh, along this section, the excess will be removed. One thing I did, I suppose I did notice uh, on this occasion is that the the excess bare metal foil did actually leave some residue behind. Now that did seem to clean up reasonably well with, with, with a moist uh, cotton bud. But you can minimize the amount of that, amount of kind of X or residue that's left behind uh, if you use some masking tape. So you can almost mask up very close to where you're going to cut and then lay the bare metal foil on top of that masking tape. And that can help protect the surface because you can detack the masking tape uh, to the point where it'll leave no residue. So that's something I didn't try on this kit. Uh, and I'll have to remember <laughs> for the next time I do it and hopefully try out that method. But as I said, the, the residue that is left behind, uh, fairly easy to clean up with a, with a cotton bud. But, but ultimately, it is just another, I suppose, surface contaminant that, that you're getting on top of that kind of nice 2K finish. So it is worth kind of considering the option of using some kind of masking tape as a, as a protective layer. So here you can see me just attempting to remove that little bit of residue that I found. Uh, so once again, just burnish down the edge of the bare metal foil. Also make sure that you burnish around the underside of the, the kind of window trim behind the dash. I sometimes leave a little bit of excess behind because that can kind of help uh, making sure that it adheres properly, or it seems to anyway. So the, the door quarter lights are also bare metal foiled. Uh, I suppose this is one area of the kit that I was... A little bit disappointed with once they were foiled they actually looked i suppose quite thick uh, a little bit out of scale i think it may be something that could have been replaced with some a little bit of scratch building to make them look less intrusive i suppose uh, so I do think they stand out a little bit uh, some kits would, would approach this slightly differently So we've now kind of worked our way around kind of all the major areas around the door, the kind of quarter lights and the the, the two doors in and around the rear window. Uh, and for this kit, that's pretty much it. There is a small strip of bare metal foil around the, the kind of rear quarter light windows as well. But that's on the window parts directly because uh, that's molded in into those parts. So now that I'm happy with that bare metal foil, uh, it's time to get in with the UMP wax, which is step number three of the, the UMP polishing system. So as with most other compounds, uh, the wax has kind of worked into the surface, allow it to haze over and dry, and then buff it off uh, with a different part of the microfiber tail that I'm using. So because of the, the 2K thickness, uh, where it's gone into some of the holes in, in, in and around the car where parts are going to get mounted, uh, I'm just using a rotary tool just to basically remount those holes a little bit, just to make them a little bit bigger so that it'll accept some of the parts a little bit more easily. So in this case, I'm kind of working out the, I suppose, the, the, the badge on the trunk and then the two... Uh, brake indicator lights for the rear so this is the badge just getting fitted when i don't drop it and then using some uh micro crystal micro scale crystal clear which is pva uh, type glue that's used to basically stick those parts to the outside uh, it's sufficiently strong for these small parts, plus it's easy to clean up uh, even once it's completely dry. Uh, so you don't risk kind of damaging your clear coat by getting some CA glue or 
you don't want to put extra thin anywhere near it. So back to poor decisions. Uh, so this Molotov chrome pen that I've got, there's a little bit left in it, so it was enough to clean up the sprue gate. Um, kind of witness marks on on the bumpers. Uh, I think in retrospect, I, I really should have stripped the chrome and just waited for a refill bottle to arrive and then airbrush that and clear coat it with aqua gloss. I think that would have been a better solution. But I didn't. I, I went with the kit chrome. So because the sprue gates are absolutely massive and poorly located, uh, which is one complaint of Revell kits, I did have to touch that up on the underside. So once that's nicely set, uh, I can go in using some Tamiya Acrylic Clear Red, and that's to uh, basically simulate the brake lights and indicator lights on the rear. So they're just infilled with a little bit of clear red, and that does the job absolutely perfectly over a chrome. So it's just carefully working around that kind of rear light cluster, uh, trying to get sufficient paint on so that it flows nicely and settles nicely with limited kind of visible brush marks. And that's the same on both sides. And then there's a couple of other small chrome pieces that go on the, the rear. Once again, uh, they're stuck in using some PVA uh, micro crystal clear. So here I'm just doing a little bit of a dry fit on the front bumper. Uh, as with the rear bumper, there is a little bit of uh, Molotov chrome that's needed to cover up the sprue attachment point. It's not perfectly matched, but because it's on the underside, it's less visible. The one disappointing bit is there was a little bit of a kind of seam line on the front bumper. So some sanding work was needed there to smooth that out, which meant the corners of the front bumpers or of the front bumper needed a little bit of Molotow uh, just to cover that up. So once I'm happy with that and it's nicely set aside to dry, I can get on and attach the indicators on the front once again using uh, some crystal clear. They're set into a recess. I'll go back later and paint them clear orange. Uh, I think that's done off camera. But while I'm doing this, the, the Molotow Chrome is, is drying away nicely. Uh, so in this instance, it's had probably at least an hour's drying time which the Molotov will stay extremely fragile uh, within an hour. Uh, but, you you know, as, as long as you don't touch where you've kind of coated it, uh, it's easy enough to work with those parts. So there's a couple of locating holes for the front bumper, a bit of micro crystal clear again, and that's put nicely in place on the front. And this is where I touch the Molotov chrome and realize I'm going to have to go back and fix that a little bit later. But there we go. That's my impatient side coming out. So the headlights each consist of basically a chrome part, which forms the back of the headlight and then a clear part that sits over it. So the chrome parts are basically stuck down with a bit of PVA in the recess using a little bit of blue tack just to pick those parts up and pop them into the recess. So they sit in quite nicely and then a little bit of uh, crystal clear around the outside of the, the headlight glass and those parts are dropped into place on the front. And then that's the same on the other side. A little bit of crystal clear around the edge. Pop it in its recess and it's done. Uh, so unfortunately I had a cracked windscreen. Uh, not sure how that happened. However, 
I did contact Ravel for spares. Uh, they're a bit slow in getting back to me. As I'm impatient, I decided to use some acetate, basically some plastic packaging, uh, to form my own new windscreen. Uh, so I'm just marking out basically a, a basic outline of the windscreen and side windows, uh, the little quarter lights, and I'm going to cut that from this acetate sheet. So I've cut cut the windscreen slightly oversize, uh, basically, so I can test fit it and then trim it uh, using scissors to fit. So basically, you want to take off the minimum, refit, retrim, and do that until you get an absolutely perfect fit uh, for where you need it. So once I'm happy with that, that's then placed uh, in its windscreen location. That looks reasonably okay. Uh, quite happy with that. Now I'm cutting out the quarter lights as well using exactly the same process. Cut them out a little bit oversize, check the fit, and then they'll get trimmed back to size. So once I'm happy with all those windows, I'm going to use some quick setting UV activated resin. Uh, this was picked up from eBay, not a huge amount of money. And you apply the resin and use the, the, the enclosed UV light to set that resin. And it sets in, it says five seconds, but probably leave it about 10, maybe a little bit longer in some locations. Uh, and that's used around all the transparent parts. Uh, again, it's one of those uh, glues that's easy to clear up if you do run into any problems. It's not the strongest, but then for clear parts, you're not really aiming for strength. Uh, so that's used on the, the remaining kit transparent parts as well. So the rear three quarter lights and uh, rear screen. So now that that's all done. Uh, the interior tub is placed inside the upper body shell and then the the chassis with the engine mounted and the running gear is installed so it's a little bit of a tight squeeze to get the engine in but with a little bit of manipulation that's popped into place uh, pretty much perfectly actually so here i'm just checking that fit make sure i'm happy with it so once I'm happy that's all nicely aligned, I uh, can pop the wheels on. So they pop on with a little bit of force, no adhesive necessary. And those wheels do actually spin, so you can play away to the kit to your heart's content when it's complete, although I never personally do. So now I'm happy with that. There's a few parts need to go in the engine bay. Uh, so I think this must be uh, possibly a brake servo, uh, some kind of liquid reservoir. Not sure which one it is. Could be windscreen water. Could be could be anything. And then there's a front bulkhead with the radiator mounted, which slots down in front of the engine and behind that front bumper. So a little bit of CA glue, already test fitted, I know where it's going to slot in. A couple of drops of CA glue and pop that into place. So there's a couple of uh, intake vents on the side of the car. Uh, so they're just put on with a little bit of crystal clear. Once again, taking advantage of the fact that it's easy to clean up if you put too much on. And when it does dry, it dries clear. And it's got sufficient grip to hold those parts in place. So all in all, those parts go in uh, perfectly. So there's a decal to go on the, the air box. 
uh, and just using some crystal clear again just to pop that on top of the engine and that will stick nicely in place so that was one of the kits chrome parts uh, i did give it a coat of matte varnish just to dull it down a little bit uh, then there's a radiator hose which goes from the engine block to the front radiator a little bit of ca glue and some manipulation with some tweezers a couple of times and then my head gets in the way and as if by some kind of miracle pops in place and we're done now unfortunately it was a couple of decals which i lost uh, so it was a decal for the emblems on the front grill and on the rear bumper uh, so i'm just filling them in with a little bit of detail using a paintbrush so it's the Mustang symbol on the front and the Cobra sim symbol on the on the trunk. So there's a decal which goes on the front, which I've managed to keep off screen for the number plate. Not my best camera work, I might add. And then for the rear, we're using the decal, but it's just cut out and left on the backing paper. Uh, and stuck in place with some PVA glue on the rear. Of course, that gives the kind of impression of a of a solid kind of number plate holder, I guess. So a little bit of adjustment. You do need to be a little bit careful. You don't use too much crystal clear. So a little bit of touch up under the engine bay and then we can get on to the final step number four of the ump system polishing system uh, which is the shine and as with the previous steps uh, using a microfiber towel to polish that into the surface and that should bring out the shine on top of the wax and the polish and the compound that we've used previously uh, the shine also seems usable on the clear parts as well and get rid of any kind of fingerprints and then the final step is the attachment of the single wing mirror which is on the driver's side so a little bit of tweaking of that and i'm happy with its position so the final step where the bonnet pins are located on the the, the bonnet obviously uh, I'm just adding a little strip of wire just to show uh, basically the lanyard for the for the bonnet pins, which is visible in all the photos I've seen on this car, and just adds a little kind of touch of detail to the front. So that wire is just wrapped underneath and stuck down with a little bit of CA, CA glue on the bottom. Uh, the bonnet is rarely going to be up on this car, so I'm not too worried about trimming the excess in this case. So once I'm happy with that, the bonnet is slotted into place. Uh, it should fit pretty much spot on because I've test fitted it a couple of times and yes it does and a wheel fell off so we'll pop that back on and there we go that that's pretty much the kit complete uh, and behind the camera there's a nice smiling face because I think I'm, I, I'm, I am quite happy with how this has come out so there's a final little bit of a rub down with a glass cleaning cloth just to get rid of any final fingerprints and the kit is pretty much good to go so let's go have a look at a few photos of what the kit looks like so as i said you know this is a cheap kit from ravel it is an older molding but you know i like the car i like the shape so it was an element of enjoyment uh, throughout this build process, despite the fact that it's not a brilliant kit and it's a little bit dated. But I think it does look the part. I think those Hertz black and gold colors look fantastic. I do have the modern version in the stash and that's going to be one of my future builds. So let's go back to me for some final thoughts. Over to me. So there we go. There's the GT350H completed. Uh, I'm reasonably pleased with the outcome. Uh, I think there's a few things I would have liked to have come out better. Uh, a few areas that 
you know probably would you know certainly on the kit side i think you know there's a few things that the kit could have been better uh so it's a relatively old kind of molding uh old ravel monogram molding uh it is shown its age some of the fit on the body is not great uh however you know general alignment and general fit of everything else was was pretty okay actually quite surprised uh kit transparencies were not great Maybe locally, actually, you know, the windscreen was broken and I replaced it with some some acetate sheet. So that maybe actually worked out in my favour in that case. Uh, so, you know, overall, uh, I think, you know, that that particular shape Mustang, I really like. I'm quite a fan of that kind of earlier shape. Uh, I think there's something about the, the kind of line along the kind of shoulder of the car and you know, that cabin bit just kind of sits like a separate pot. Of, you know, I do really like it. The fairly flat front on it as well. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so it was nice to build it. And the price the kit came at from Amazon at the time. You know, for, for the amount of kind of, I suppose, fun I've had building it, well worth it. Well worth it, despite, despite the few challenges. Uh, you know, paint and decals came out good. Pro range performed well. Uh, my general kind of skill set in building is as good, as good as it's always been, I suppose. A few little bit bits and pieces here and there of not, you know, not perfect. Uh, leaving the kit chrome on was maybe not the best decision because it's not great. Uh, kind of made a bit of a hasty decision at the time to to just stick with the kit chrome rather than strip it and respray it with something uh, I think my next American muscle car at some point in the future uh, possibly Dodge Challenger I think I'll go with, with stripping the chrome on that kit uh, but yeah I, you know, overall really enjoyed it really liked the kit it's up on the shelf and, and it's sat at the front so, so that means I'm quite pleased with the outcome so, uh, so thank you for watching thank you for sticking with this uh, if you've not done so, please give a subscribe, please drop a like if you like the video, and please leave a comment. All comments are welcome, and I try and respond to them all. Uh, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time for, I don't know, whatever comes next, but there'll be something coming up in the next couple of weeks. So uh, stand by, stay tuned, come back later. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.